Hi everyone, in this video we are going to discuss about equation of straight line in the intercept form. Now before we go into the derivation of the equation, let's try to understand what is an intercept, right? So here I have taken an example, suppose we have a straight line L which is in the light green color here on the diagram and let's assume that this straight line cuts the x axis at point A whose coordinates are A comma 0, lowercase a comma 0 and also it cuts the y axis at point B whose coordinates are 0 comma lowercase b. So when a straight line cuts the x axis wherever it is cutting the x axis the distance of that point from the origin would be called the x intercept so in our example it's the lowercase a that is the x intercept that's actually nothing but the distance of the point a from the origin similarly lowercase b which is the distance of the point b where the straight line cuts the y axis so that distance would be called the y intercept so in our example the y intercept is actually b units right so the distance of the point A from the origin would be called the x intercept and distance of the point B from the origin would be called the y intercept. So in our diagram lowercase a is the x intercept, lowercase b is the y intercept. Now let's try to see what happens if this straight line slowly and slowly start to become parallel to the x axis. So let me first draw another version of this straight line. So here I have drawn another version of this straight line. It's a little more inclined and let's assume that it cuts the x axis at a point which is right here which is around 10 units right here but I have a red dot here and let's call this point to be P right. Let's call this point as P. So let's assume that this, this straight line now cuts the x axis at point P and it it cuts the y axis at the same point B, right? So now what I'm trying to do, I'm trying to show you what happens to the x intercept when the inclination of this point actually increases or decreases, whatever you may call it. But the angle of inclination obviously increases because it's the angle between the straight line and the positive x axis. So if we talk about angle of inclination, then obviously I increase the angle of inclination of the straight line in this new diagram. And here it cuts the x axis at point P, which is actually further away from point a. So what happened? When I increase the angle of inclination, the x intercept value actually increased because you see now the distance of the point P from the origin is larger than the distance of the point A. So point A was right here. I am putting a red dot right there. So point A was much closer to the origin than point B, right? So as the angle of inclination increases, you see the x intercept value also increases. Now let me draw another version of this straight line. So here I have drawn another version of the straight line where it cuts the x axis at point Q and here you see the distance of Q from the origin is even larger than P or A, right? So now what happened? I increased the angle of inclination and the x intercept value even increased. So if we continue to do like this and finally if we try to draw a line which is almost parallel to x axis then what will happen? The x intercept value will approach infinity. It will become much much larger than OA or OP or OQ right. So finally so as you can see if the line almost becomes parallel to the x axis the x intercept would approach infinity because then we can say that the line is going to cut the x axis at infinity. So we can make a note like this. So we can say that if a straight line is parallel to the x axis then its x intercept will be approaching infinity whether it's positive infinity or negative infinity really does not matter. It depends on how the orientation of the straight line is. But one thing is very clear that when the straight line almost becomes parallel to the x axis the x intercept will approach infinity. It will be much 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 larger right. And similarly if a straight line almost becomes parallel to the y axis then the y intercept will also approach infinity whether that it's positive infinity or negative infinity doesn't really matter but it will approach infinity right the y intercept will also approach infinity when the straight line slowly and slowly becomes parallel to the y axis. I hope it is clear up to this point. We will use this concept to show you what would be the equation of a straight line which is parallel to the x axis or what would be the equation of a straight line which is parallel to the y axis. So now let's try to derive the equation of a straight line in the intercept form. I'm going to modify this picture a little bit. So in this diagram as you can see we have a straight line L and it cuts the x axis at point A and it cuts the y axis at point B. The coordinates of A are lowercase a comma 0 where the lowercase a is actually the x intercept and similarly the coordinates of B are 0 comma lowercase b where the lowercase b is the y intercept. Now let's assume that we have a point P on this straight line whose coordinates are let's say x comma y. Now I'm going to draw two little triangles here. 
So what I've done, I have dropped a perpendicular from P onto the X axis and let's suppose that the perpendicular lands on the X axis at point Q. So obviously the coordinates of Q would be X comma zero because it will coincide with the point P on the X axis. So both P and Q will have the same X coordinate and because we have assumed that the X coordinate of P is X, so the X coordinate of Q will also be X and because the point Q is on the X axis, its Y coordinate would be zero. So the coordinate coordinates of Q would be X comma zero. And then the line segment OB is obviously on the Y axis. So now if you look at it, there are actually two triangles. There is a larger triangle, which is the ABO or BOA, whatever you may call it, the bigger one. And then we have a smaller triangle, which is the PQA. First of all, both of these triangles are right triangles because we are on the Cartesian coordinate system, which is the rectangular coordinate system. And these angles are all 90 degree because X axis and Y axis, they are perpendicular to each other and similarly I have drawn a perpendicular from P onto the X axis. So the angle BOA or PQA both of those angles are right angles. So now if you look at it there are two corresponding angles. If we assume that BO and PQ are two parallel lines obviously they will be parallel lines because they both are perpendicular on X axis so they will be parallel lines and if we assume that our straight line is actually a transversal then these two angles right here I am using a green arc right here the angle OBA and the angle QPA both those angles would be corresponding angles that means they will be equal and then our other angle which I am using a pink arc right here this other angle which is the OAB that angle angle is a common angle between the two triangles. So we can say that these two triangles are similar triangles because they have corresponding angles equal. Even though their size is different, they are not congruent, but still they are, they are similar triangles, right? So can we write it like this? So what I have done, I have written here triangle BOA, the larger triangle, is similar to the triangle PQA, which is the smaller triangle. And because both the triangles are similar triangles, their corresponding sides would be in the same ratio. So let me write that down. And now that we know the corresponding sides would be in the same ratio, from here we can take the first part of this equation right here, we can take this first portion right here and then we can try to come up with an equation here, right? So let's see how that looks. So let's write down here, so PQ divided by BO is equal to the ratio of QA to OA. Now, if you think about it, so from here, what is the length of the PQ or what is the distance of PQ? What is the PQ distance? Let's look at our diagram here. So PQ distance is actually Y. Why? Because the Y coordinate of P is Y and so obviously PQ would be Y. So for PQ, can we use Y and then divided by what is the uh, BO distance? Well, BO distance is actually the Y intercept, which is lowercase b. So we can say it like this, lowercase b and that will be equal to, so what is QA? Let's see the distance QA. So QA would be the X intercept minus X because OA is the X intercept and then OQ is lowercase X. So QA would be A minus X. So we can say A minus X for QA and then divided by what is OA? Well, if you think about it, OA is nothing but the X intercept, which is the lowercase A. So it's going to be like this. And then from here, what do we get? So from here we can say that y divided by b is equal to, now if we distribute the denominator across the two terms here, so it would be a divided by a minus x divided by a and then from here we get y divided by b is equal to 1 minus x divided by a and then if we bring the x term to the left side then we are going to get something like this so it will be positive x divided by a plus we already have y divided by b and all of that will be equal to 1 and that is our equation that's exactly what we wanted to derive so this is the equation of our straight line in the intercept form now why do we say it is in the intercept form because here you see we have only the two variables x and y and other than that the only other unknown would be the intercept the x intercept which is the lowercase a and the y intercept which is the lowercase b so because this equation is expressed in terms of the intercepts of this straight line it is called the equation of straight line in the intercept form.
And now that we have the equation in the intercept form, let's try to use our concept of this line parallel to x axis or a line parallel to y axis, right? Now, as you can see right here, we already noted that if there is a line which is parallel to x axis, then the x intercept approaches infinity. Let's use that concept and see what happens. So now what I'm going to do, I'm going to try and come up with the equation of a line which is parallel to x axis. So for a line which is parallel to the x-axis, we know that the x-intercept approaches infinity. Now if we use that concept, and by the way, x-intercept is actually the lowercase a, right? So let me, in parenthesis, let me simply write a. So we are actually talking about the lowercase a. So a approaches infinity. So actually I can write it like this. So that means from here we can say, okay, then a actually approaching infinity for a line which is parallel to the x-axis, right? And if that is the case, then can we use this value of x? I mean, can we use infinity in place of a? Yeah, let's try that and let's see what happens. So our original equation is like this. We have x divided by a plus y divided by b is equal to 1. So from here, can we write it like this? Can we say, okay, then x divided by in place of a, I'm going to write infinity plus y divided by b is equal to 1. And now, as you know, any finite number divided by infinity is actually almost 0, right? So any finite number divided by infinity would be 0. So from here we can say, okay, then the first term becomes 0 plus the second term is y divided by b. All of that is equal to 1. And then from here, what do we get? Well, if we multiply both sides by b, then it will become y equals b. And that is the equation of a straight line which is parallel to the x-axis. Let's use the same concept for a straight line which is parallel to the y-axis. So now let's talk about this straight line which is parallel to the y-axis. We know that the line parallel to the y-axis will have a y-intercept almost approaching infinity. That's from our previous discussion in, in this video. So we can say, okay, what is y-intercept? Well, y-intercept is actually the lowercase b. So we can say, okay, then lowercase b actually approaches infinity for a line which is parallel to y-axis. And then let's try to use this value of b in our standard form. So our standard form is like this, x divided by a plus y divided by b is equal to 1. And here in place of b, if we use infinity, then it's going to look like this, x divided by a plus y divided by infinity is equal to 1. And from here, we can say that x divided by a plus a finite number divided by infinity that becomes 0. So that is 0 is equal to 1. And now from here, if you multiply both sides by a, then it will become x equals a. And that is the equation of the straight line, which is parallel to y axis. So simply by looking at the equation, you can easily tell, you know, whether a line is parallel to any of the axes, right? So if you see an equation which is like y equals something, you know that line is actually parallel to the x-axis. And also if you see the equation of a straight line as x equals something, then you know that straight line is actually parallel to the y-axis. So let's take an example and see how we can come up with the equation of our straight line. Suppose we have been given that the x intercept is equal to 5 and the y intercept is equal to negative 3. And then we have to find out the equation of this straight line, right? So now what is the solution then? Well, our solution would be very easy. So let's say our solution is going to look like this. We know the intercept form of the equation of a straight line is like x divided by a plus y divided by b that is equal to 1. So here let's substitute the values of a and b. So it would be x divided by 5 plus y divided by negative 3. You see all I have done is I have used the value of a and b right here. And then this is equal to 1. So now if we simplify this a little bit, so it is going to look like x divided by 5 minus y divided by 3 is equal to 1 and that is our equation in the intercept form and this is the answer. So if you have to find the equation of a straight line whose intercepts have been provided, then the equation is going to look like this. Now you can simplify this little bit and you can write it in other forms of a straight line. For example, if we take the same thing here, so we can say, okay, this can also be written as if we multiply both sides by 15, because the LCM of 5 and 3 would be 15. So I'm thinking if we multiply both sides of this equation by 15, then we can get rid of the denominator. So it would become 3 times 5 would be 15. So it would be 3x minus 5y is equal to 15. So that is another form of our equation. You can write it like this. 
or even if you say you know if I bring everything to the left side let's say 3x minus 5y minus 15 is equal to 0 that is also another form of a straight lines equation and also from here you can say okay can we do like this can we just have y on one side sure let's try so from here we can say okay 5y so let's bring 5y to one side then on the other side we will be left with 3 times x minus 15 and from here we can say okay then y is equal to 3 divided by 5 times x so that is the coefficient of x and then minus 15 divided by 5 that would be 3. So that would also be another form of the straight lines equation. Even though they all look kind of different, I mean the look and feel is different but they all represent the same straight line on the Cartesian plane. I hope everything made sense so far. Thank you for watching. See you in the next video.